I'm Steve Kosky, host of Papa Steve's Rebel 1100 Garage, where we show do-it-yourselfers how to maintain your motorcycle. Let's get greasy. Perhaps the most important maintenance you can do yourself on your Rebel 1100 is to check and correct your tire pressure. Your tires lose air pressure over time, whether you ride frequently or the bike sits in the garage. Low tire pressure can undermine your motorcycle's handling and ride precision, reduce its fuel economy, decrease its braking performance, cause the tire to overheat, and create uneven tire wear. A seriously underinflated tire could even blow out while you are cruising along at any unsuspecting speed on an up until that moment delightful day. A blowout is bad enough when your vehicle has four tires. It could be catastrophic when you have only two. Overinflation is more uncomfortable than hazardous, but overinflation will cause your tire to wear quickly where there is tire to pavement contact. Checking your tire pressure once a week is good practice. Of course, I realize that you already know how to put air in your tires. Unless you were born when wheelwrights still forged iron bands onto wooden wagon wheels, and you've been riding only big wheels ever since. So in this video, I will pass along some tips and recommendations about how to make your Rebel 1100 tire pressure maintenance more convenient. First, a bit of tire history. The earliest tires were bands of leather. Later, iron and eventually steel bands were wrapped around wooden cart and wagon wheels. A skilled wheelwright would heat the metal band in a forge to expand it. Next, he would place the band over the wheel, then quench the wheel and band in a water tank, causing the metal to contract back to its original size so that it would fit tightly on the wheel. We can blame the Scots for our need to put air in our tires. A Scottish inventor patented the pneumatic tire in 1847. However, that tire never went into production. The first practical pneumatic tire was manufactured 41 years later in 1888 in Belfast, Ireland by Scottish-born John Boyd Dunlop, owner of one of Ireland's most prosperous veterinary practices. Dunlop was trying to prevent the headaches his 10-year-old son Johnny suffered from riding his tricycle over rough pavements. Cyclist Willie Hume demonstrated the supremacy of Dunlop's tires in 1889, winning the tires' first ever races in Ireland and later England. Dunlop's patent was declared invalid in 1892 because of prior applications by forgotten fellow Scot Robert William Thompson of London. Thompson filed patents in London in 1845, France in 1846, and the United States in 1847. However, it was Dunlop who was credited with realizing rubber could retain its resilience while withstanding the wear and tear of being a tire. Dunlop's Pneumatic Tire Company would later become Dunlop Rubber and Dunlop Tires. Today, the Dunlop brand is distributed for passenger cars and light trucks in North America by Goodyear. Japan's Sumitomo Rubber Industries acquired the Dunlop Motorcycle Tire brand for North America from Goodyear in 2015. Your Rebel 1100 came equipped from the factory with beefy Dunlop D428 tires. Now back to the do-it-yourself maintenance. Check your tire pressure frequently with a good quality gauge. Heat from the road can increase tire pressure, so make sure you check your tire pressure when your bike is cold, meaning it hasn't been ridden in at least 30 minutes. Be aware that gauges at gas stations are rarely calibrated. Being off by just a few pounds per square inch can alter ride comfort and your safety. 
Not all gauges are equally accurate anyway. You want a gauge that is correct for your pressure range. This can be a challenge. For example, my wife's car tires take 30 PSI. My car and Rebel 1100 tires take 33 PSI. However, we also own three bicycles. Some of the bike tires take 65 PSI and some take 85 PSI. A pencil style gauge that is arranged for high pressure bicycle tires may not be so accurate for car and motorcycle tires that need half the pressure or less. Gauges come in a variety of styles and prices. The least expensive are the pencil style gauges. Next are the dial types, followed by digital gauges. I own each of these, but for convenience I prefer my combination gauge and inflator. My Astral AI gauge inflator works for all these vehicles and is accurate to one-tenth PSI. I like it because it's so convenient. I can attach the chuck to the valve stem, measure the pressure, then increase or reduce pressure while the chuck remains attached. The recommended tire pressure for the Rebel 1100 is 33 PSI. I always inflate to 34 PSI to allow for the slight loss of air when I disconnect the chuck. The drawback to the Astral AI is that it works best with a tank style air compressor. Here's a picture of the tank style compressor that I bought after using electric pump style inflators for years. It cost about $125 and is rugged enough to last. Electric compressors are noisy, but tank style compressors are only loud while recharging the tank. I usually leave mine turned off until I need it. Although it's also fun to leave the compressor on so I can hear my startled wife shriek when she walks by it in the garage and it kicks on unexpectedly. You don't need to wait until the tank reaches full pressure to use it. Full pressure, 150 PSI, takes about two minutes. I find the tank has sufficient pressure after about 30 seconds. As for my gauge inflator, the Astral AI costs $25. So for a $150 investment, I can conveniently and quickly service the tire pressure for a motorcycle, two cars, and three bicycles. I bought one other accessory to make maintaining the Rebel 1100 tire pressure more convenient. You have probably already noticed that access to the tire stem on the 1100's front tire is easy. The rear tire, though, needs to be rotated to a position where you can reach the valve stem. So much hardware is in the way, like the muffler, the swing arm, and the shocks. Limited access to the rear valve stem can be a disincentive to checking your tire pressure. I solved the problem by installing Fobo 2 tire pressure monitoring sensors to the front and rear tires of my 1100. The Fobo 2s are screw-on sensors that replace the caps already on your valve stems. The sensors monitor tire pressure and transmit the reading by Bluetooth to the Fobo 2 application on your iPhone. Fobo 2 costs about $100 on Amazon for two tires. So, before I take my 1100 out for exercise, I pull out my smartphone, then check the front and rear tire pressure. I learn immediately if either one needs air. The Fobo 2 also has an alert that will sound on your phone in real time when the pressure falls below the warning level you set. I especially appreciate this feature. Here's why. A few weeks after putting new Michelin tires on my Suzuki S50 Boulevard, I found a 16-penny nail embedded in the tread of my new rear tire. Fortunately, the nail went through one of the tread ribs and didn't puncture the inner tube. Imagine my distress when I got home, parked the motorcycle, and found a six inch long nail the diameter of a knitting needle impaling the rubber along the side of my brand new tire. I would have been even more distressed if the nail had punctured the tire, 
and it went flat while I was writing. Similarly, after I bought my Rebel 1100, I found a short screw embedded in the tire tread. The screw didn't puncture that tire either. The Fobo 2 now provides an extra level of safety if a road hazard punctures one of the 1100's tires. I get a phone alert while I might still have the chance to pull over to the side of the road safely. My recommendation is to spend some money, upgrade your air compressor, buy a gauge inflator, and put a Fobo 2 TPMS system on your front and rear tires. The entire setup will cost you $250, but that's far cheaper than your family would be spending on your untimely funeral. That's it for maintaining the tire pressure on your Rebel 1100. Be safe. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd be delighted if you would subscribe to Cruising with Papa Steve. If you don't, I'll be just another codger talking to himself on the internet.